Hi, it's Laura Morley here from Toddler Talk, helping you to enjoy the parenting journey with your toddler. And today is none other than Q&A Tuesday. And it's one of our favorite times of the week because we get to answer a parent question that is gonna really help you with parenting your toddler. And today we have a question from Hayley and she writes, Hi Laura, just wondering if you've got some ideas to help me transition my child from a cot to a big kid bed. Thanks so much, Hayley, for your question. And if this is something that relates to you, then I really encourage you to jump on my website, www.toddlertalk.co.nz forward slash blog, because I'm gonna put a lot more ideas on there than what I can fit on this tiny little video. So anyway, what we want to do when we're transitioning our child from their cot to their big kid bed is to make it as smooth and easy and gradual as possible. So what we want to avoid doing is one day have them in their cot and then the next day have them in their bed and that's it, you know, kind of go cold turkey, pack up the cot and then that's it. It's a really, really good idea to actually break up the little steps and make it very gradual so that your child feels more settled with this change. So the first thing to do is to think, right, what we're going to do is just put the cot side down. So if you know that your child is starting to climb out of the cot anyway, then it's not really safe to have the cot side up because they can scale it and fall over. So keep the cot side down. And the other thing that it helps with, even if they're not climbing out of it, is that actually they'll have a barrier so that when they're sleeping they don't roll out, but they're still, when they wake up, able to climb out of it safely. So having the cot side down for at least a couple of days, even up to a week, will really help to get your toddler used to the fact that they can get in and out of their bed themselves and become more independent with that. The second thing that you can do is to set up their big kid bed in their room. And if you can, it's really awesome to put the cot on one side of the room and the big kid bed on the other side of the room. So they've actually got both. Then what they can do is they can sleep in their cot at night because that's their happy place and what they're used to. But during the day, during their day sleeps, they can sleep in their big kid bed. And if you're worried about moving them out because they might actually roll out, then what you need to do is just lay a mattress down next to their bed. So if you can try and wedge their bed kind of next to a wall, so there's only kind of two ways that they can roll towards the wall, or if they roll out, then they roll onto a mattress. So you could even use your cot mattress if you want and, and use that. Some other people, what they'll do is actually, instead of setting up the whole big kid bed, they'll set up just the mattress on the floor. So the child gets used to a bigger space in order to sleep on and they get, um, it's not such a worry if they're going to roll out because they're only going to roll, you know, about this much onto the floor. So day sleep in their big kid bed, night sleep in their cot. That's the second transition thing. Then the third transition is obviously to just have them sleeping in their big kid bed at night. And I know that you're freaking out going, oh my goodness, but they're going to be able to escape. And how am I going to get my little one to three year old to actually stay in their bed all night? Because finally, they're not going to have this barrier up, which, you know, they have to wait for me to get them out of. So the best thing to do is when you do move them in for their night sleep, there's always a little bit of um, difficulty around getting them to stay in bed when you first put them in. So say it's, you know, you've had your nice story time and you've read them. Um, their favorite stories and you've done your kind of evening ritual and you put them into bed and then within two seconds they're like oh this is a game I can just jump out if you want to avoid that happening and it becomes a bit of an issue where your kid keeps wandering down the hallway to come and find you then what you can do is you can read them a story and put them into bed and do their normal routine and then say to them right we're going to see if you can be really really clever and keep your feet in your big kid bed. I think you can do it. Right, you keep your feet in your big kid bed. I'm just gonna go to the toilet and then I'll come straight back and see that your feet are still in there. And if they do keep their feet in the big kid bed, then you might wanna give them a high five or maybe you might wanna give them a little glow in the dark star that they can put beside their bed. And it's like, oh wow, you get to have a little star because you're so clever at keeping your feet in your big kid bed. Good boy. Right, I've just got to go and say good night, you know, to daddy or to Nana or to somebody. Um, you know, make some kind of excuse to get out of the room and leave your child for five minutes. So you'd say, right, I'm gonna come back. I'm just gonna say goodbye to that good night to that person and then I'm gonna come straight back. I think you can be clever and keep your feet in your big kid bed. 
Now the reason why I'm doing this is because they're getting used to this kind of gradually you're um, making the times further and further away when you come and visit them. So it's just a toilet slop and then it's a say goodbye to somebody excuse and then you might have another excuse, I'm just going to go and do the dishes and then I'll come straight back. But there's actually method in my madness. And that is what you really want to do is get your kids to the point where they're so calm and lying down that they'll just naturally fall asleep. I find if you do something like the rapid return technique where you consistently stand outside their door, if they get up out of their bed then you pick them up, put them back into their bed, what happens is, is they start to ramp up with their behaviour and so they start thinking it's a game or they start getting really upset and angry and then you kind of are starting to lose the battle because they're, instead of getting into that kind of low sleep state they're actually starting to ramp up and hype up and it's very difficult to get them to sleep. So I encourage you to do something really positive with them where you do this kind of, I'm just going to pop back and I'll be back in a second, it won't be long, but gradually you kind of draw it out so that there might be 10 minutes before you pop back. And of course, if they're in that real drowsy state where you know they're not totally aware of you there, then don't go, all oh, right, we're going to give you a star now. What you could do is save the star for in the morning and say to them, you kept your feet in your big kid bed, here's a star because you are so clever. You go and put that in your room now and then when it's really, really dark, you'll be able to see all your stars. So that's just a fun way of doing it. So there's a couple of ideas. As I said, I can only fit so much into a little clip, but I am going to put some more ideas onto my blog. Don't forget to visit me at www.toddlertalk.co.nz. I would love to see you there. Have an awesome day. Bye.